All right, man. So enough of you are interested in the redneck mead. Let's get this out of the way now. It's not a carbon. I called it a carbon. It's a carboy. But then, what was it? Uh, uh, Winfield, or I'm sorry, Winfred said uh, it's not even a carboy because a carboy's got to look like a water bottle. So it right. may be nothing. Yeah. The okay. car carboy is the just the big glass vessel. That's a carboy. This okay. is just a bucket. Or I like bucket better. We're gonna call it a redneck carboy. Yeah. All right. So somebody want to know what the, the recipe was. I, it's redneck meat. I don't have a recipe. So I brought the burly carpenter over. <laughs> he does this stuff a lot. And he's going to help me uh, resist my worst uh, uh, urges. Urges. Thank you. My, my darkest urges. He's going to help me re resist. Because my urges is throw a bunch of honey in, throw a little bit of water in, see what happens. And the burly carpenter is going to help us avoid all that. All right. Well, we're going to first. We're gonna put a little science to it. Um, just a little bit, not too much. My head hurts um, already. We want to uh, want to keep it simple. Okay. Um, so basically, you've got you, you need a few things. You need a vessel, a vessel, um, <laughs> a vessel to, in which to ferment. Um, a terrible hat. You want the vessel to be clean. Um, so now it's not. <laughs> if uh, if you're just gonna grab a bucket, make sure it's food grade. Uh, on the bottom, you're gonna see a little triangle somewhere. Bam! Right there. Number two. Or number one yeah, is what you're looking for. Um, anything else, don't ferment anything in it. Uh, plastic's bad for you. Um, so if you've got an older bucket, check. Make sure there's not any cuts or chips or anything in there. Bacteria can grow in those crevasses. Um, crevasses. So um, nice. you need an airtight lid, which means it needs a gasket all the way around. Um, some kind of airlock system. Oh, we should, we should um, see this yet. There's, uh, there's a couple of systems. Yeah. We're still using this one, technically. There we go. There we go. All right, so some kind of airlock, um, bubbler, whatever, if you want to do several different ways to skin a cat. So you can do a tube into a bucket or another jug of some kind of sanitized liquid. Um, some people use vodka um, just because it's sanitary. This is a three-piece airlock. They're about 50 cents a piece, maybe something like that. Um, just a grommet. So the first casualty of my redneck system is everyone says my my redneck fermentation lock won't work. It's too small. The fermentation is going to shoot all my water out like a squirt gun, and I thought that would have been really cool, but it's gone. It's going to smell pretty bad. Yeah, well, also when it hits the floor. I'm mad. Um, okay, so now we've got a real fermentation lock, yes. courtesy of science. Yes. Three-piece airlock. Um, they also make a bubbler, but that's more for finishing. It's just so a little. Yes. Now we got to sanitize the bucket I just put my head in. Right? Yes, correct. Uh, yeah, you want to sanitize everything um, everything beforehand if you're not going to boil it. Okay, so we're going to go sanitize real quick and we'll be right back. Right, sanitize, monkey. All right, so you want to get uh, some kind of sanitizing agent. Um, this is uh, this is star sand. It's uh, acid-based. Uh, a lot of home brewers use it. Um, a lot of commercial brewers use it, uh, to my knowledge. So anyway, uh, you just want to pour some in. Um, you want to give it a good shake, make sure all surfaces that possibly... That's what we wanted to see. There you there go. There it is. Work it, baby. Work it. We're shaking. Yeah, there you go. That's what Daddy likes. All right, so we'll get that there, and then we will attempt to pry this lid back off so we can put our fermentables inside. Mm -hmm. There's bubbles in there. He all says right. the bubbles don't matter, but they're bothering me. So when you put the star sand in and shake it up, I don't know if you can get in there and see that, there's going to be bubbles. Don't fear the bubbles. I fear the bubbles. They're not gonna. They're not gonna alter the flavor at all. They're just gonna let you know, give you that little sense of security that you know it's sanitized. I feel insecure because there's bubbles in there. It's like a never mind. It's like okay. So we all gotta right. have. We're gonna do th three pounds per gallon. Or four pounds per gallon. Four pounds of honey per gallon. And we're gonna get about four and a half gallons. So you want know sixteen plus two? Sure. Why not? That'd be eighteen pounds. 18 pounds of honey. 18 pounds of honey. There we go. All right, so we got 11 there. Let's just do all nine here, and then we'll finish the rest up. Or no, this thing won't go to 18 pounds. That's right. We'll just do four pounds. Do four. But that would be 15 pounds. Oh, that smells so nice. <laughs> You're at four. Okay, so then we stop that and that'd be 15 pounds. It would actually be at more like three pounds per gallon. Right. Let's just do that. Okay, so three pounds per gallon. There's the first round. And we'll get this one. 
goon. Oh, no, we already screwed up. Hold on a second. What do we do? Because we can't put four and a half gallons of water in there because there's going to be all that honey in there. Honey's going to displace it. Yeah. So, so we'll do three. Well, we'll just, we'll just do we'll do twelve pounds. We'll just put whatever, just put it all in there, and then whatever we fill up is fine. Yeah, yeah, because that's how it works. Redneck me. There we go. It means you have a plan, and then change it in the middle. Speaking of redneck, and just dump it all in. <laughs> that's that's exactly what we just did, wasn't it? Yeah. We got complicated in the middle, so we just dumped it all in. I like it. Abort. Uh -huh. Alright, we'll be back in a minute. Alright, so we got way too much honey for our water, which I'm fine with that. It makes me sweet. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use the revolting axe. No, I'm kidding. We're not going to use the revolting axe. <laughs> I just, uh, the burly carpenter was looking at it, and he's got a plan for one. So Adam over at NorthPointAxe.com, we need a burly axe now. He wants it bigger with a beard. So, mm -hmm. be thinking about it. He's going to be in touch with you about his axe. Okay. Alright, so what we're trying to do, uh, I've got a hydrometer, um, more science. Uh, so all this is going to do is give us a specific gravity. Uh, it's going to tell us how much, how, how dense the liquid is. So basically we want it around 1.067, something like that. That's going to make a pretty stout mead. Um, and right now we're sitting on 11:30, so we need more water. What what is the barley axe going to look like? What, is it just going to be bigger with a beard? Is that it? Well, what I want is I want more meat. I want more mass here. Mm -hmm. So and a longer beard, probably five six inch beard, mm -hmm. come up a little bit more mass here. But I still want the hammer on the back, maybe a little beefier hammer. See, the problem is Adam only does like historical. I don't know, he might do it for you. Um, we'll see. That's NorthPointX.com. Yes, that was a shameless shill. Okay, where are we at? All right, so we are still hanging out. We're about 11.28. So we got to go a little bit farther? So, yeah, we'll get another half. We'll, just go, jug. we'll just go to that line and stop right. forever. Okay, we'll be back. Burley Carpenter just told me something I didn't know. He said this could get violent. I had no idea meat could be violent. But it makes sense, though. The Vikings loved it, so it makes sense it would be violent. Yes. So, basically, honey is a very fermentable sugar. That means it doesn't take much for yeast to start eating it and producing alcohol. So, um, if you have said little tube with a violent fermentation, it's just going to it's gonna spit froth. And it's just going to keep pumping it out, pumping it out, pumping it out. So, Good thing I brought the revolting axe. I didn't know things were going to get violent. You could fight them off. All right, so we are... Where's my number here? All right, so we're right at 11.20. All right, so everybody write that down. Where did we want it's going to be? be a test letter. We want it to be like 10.70. 10.70. So we're way high. So we have too much honey, right? Yes. You never have to make money. Correct. So, what we're going to do, I'm going to skip that. That's good. Not possible. So, how are we going to describe this 1070? What is it called? 1070 what? It's 1120. 1.12. 1 is our current specific gravity. Current specific gravity. Yep. So, that's your, that's going to be like your, your starting weight. Pretty much. Oh yeah, this is this is sad. Yeah, that's your starting gravity, and then your ending gravity will be will take you again in a week, and the hydrometer will basically it's sitting high in the water now because it's so dense. Once it gets more alcohol, the sugar's gone. It's going to start sinking as it gets less dense. All right, so you'll take whatever this number is, the second number, and then there's a there's a magical equation. That you put both of those numbers in and it tells you the percentage of alcohol that you have made. Wait, what's the date? 29th? Yeah, 529. That's sad. Look at that. It is. Is it trailing off there? <sighs> Alright, so now we got. We got to add the yeast. So, the third, third yeast. part of the equation. Um, so, recap right quick you've got a vessel, you've got fermentables, you've got. Sanitization. Is that right? 
Sanitization. We're not too sanitary down Clean here. Clean stuff. Sure All right. Mm -hmm. um, so then you're going to add your yeast, uh, depending on what you're brewing or you know what you're fermenting. Um, honey, like I said, is a very fermentable sugar. It uh, doesn't take any nutrients or anything like that. For the, it's oh, yeah. readily available for there. the yeast. Um, fruits are a little different. Um, if you're going to do fruit like a wine, if you're going to do wine, you want to, uh, if you don't have yeast nutrient, want to fool with all that stuff. Uh, it's easy just to freeze the fruit, thaw it out. The freezing process converts the sugars into what the yeast can eat. Um, we had brewer's yeast we used to use in all the old ones that we did, but we got rid of it for Passover and I forgot to get any more, so I had to borrow some of Burley's yeast. Um, and this is a... Uh, it's just a dry yeast. It's a red. Well, we should cut that with the whole thing. Red wine yeast. Yes, you should. Well done, Adam. Well done, indeed. All right. So dumping the whole thing in there. Yep. Just sprinkle it over the top. Doesn't have to be in any kind of order or anything. I'm gonna grab the lid. We shake it up, or I mean, stir it up, or just leave it on the top. Leave it on top. So um, basically, uh, some some yeast acts differently than others. I'm going to tip it too much. You get it? All right. Um, so with some wine yeast, I was wrong. You do want to you want to aerate this a little bit. So we'll start. Wine yeast, you want to aerate, get some air in there, get it working. Um, a, uh, a beer yeast is just a different strain. Um, it likes to, some of it likes to sit on top. It's all a bunch of different stuff. You can read it. There's articles on the internet. Just Google yeast. There are. Find Five billion yeast cells in this package. There's a lot. Five billion yeast yeah. cells. Yeah, those guys know what they're doing. I don't think we have enough honey. Um, I don't know, it's plenty. Five billion! Yeah. Fine. All right. So, we'll give this a quick start. Um, we're not going to do too much because we don't want to expend too much energy here. Alright, so now we're going to go, we're going to cap it off. You want to do anything else? Uh, we, Put anything you know, else we, in it? We probably need to drain that. Dig it out. Okay, yep. Alright, so we'll grab that needs to be. We think my redneck spigot might have honey stuck in it that's not mixed up. Good. Okay, here we go. Oh, we got We got sanitize, baby. We got sanitize. Everything's got to be, everything it touches, everything it touches, that keeps the, the foot taste out of it. I feel like we're the taste. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles here fighting the foot. <laughs> there you go. Didn't expect a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle reference in a Revolting Man video, did you? It's holding. So, it's not working. Speaking of works. Yeah, I was going to take a big sip of this, but not now with all that sanitizer in there. It's fine. You're going to drink it later with the sanitizer in. Alright. I don't think there's too much honey down in there. No. It all dissolves pretty well. Alright. So, now that we're not going to we're not gonna put any herbs or fruits at or anything like that. At some point we're supposed to put raisins in there, but I don't think it's at this stage. It might be at the next stage. Well, you can put them in now, that's just going to be extra sugar that it's going to ferment. Oh, that's good. We so, like more fermentation. Yeah. So, if you're going to add anything, um, if you add fruit to a mead, it's actually called a mellow mill. Um, and then uh, a, what, a, what? a mellow mill. I'm not drinking mellow mill. I drink mead. That's just, that's just yeah. crazy. So, um, now would be the, the time to put in your, your extra flavors and stuff. Um, juniper berries are good in mead. Um, you can do, uh, there, there's a bunch of flowers and stuff. Just Google mead recipes. There's a bunch of stuff you can put in there. A lot of people do oranges, um, citrus fruit, stuff like that. Um, so we're going to cap it off and we're going to hope that it doesn't blow out right there. And we'll get it all sealed and it did not. Awesome. Alright, so with this airlock, let's see if we can get over here in the light for you. Alright, so we've got cylinder and then the tube that kind of goes to the inside we're going to fill this up with sanitizer careful not to pour it down the tube into the liquid there so we're going to try to do this here and there's a line on here come on buddy make it happen 
All right. So there's our sanitizer. That way bacteria can't flow back in. And I've lost the rest of the airlock. Oh, now we have to use the redneck version. Do it. Uh, wow, we've got a few minutes. Oh my gosh, looks heavy. Okay, here we go. Let me shill for NorthPointAxe.com one more time. This is a long time viewer. Uh, he started this business at North Point Axe long after he subscribed to the channel. He's one of our own. And he's starting a home business to try to change uh, his life and his and his family's life. So if you need an axe or if you're interested in Viking reproduction axes, uh, go check out NorthPointAxe.com. Please just check him out. Look at his stuff. He's got some great stuff. The traffic helps if nothing else. NorthPointAxe.com. Well, that's axe with an E. Uh, and we are going to have, actually we're about to have a, uh, another Revolting Man uh, uh, like discount code. He's about to make a limited run of some axes. We're going to do a whole video on this soon about this, this limited run of axes he's going to make. Uh, and there'll be a discount code for Revolting Man people. So go check that out. All right, I'm sorry. Back. Okay, so the rest of the three-piece airlock, air comes up, bubbles go out, nothing bad comes in. All right. It's so good. We don't even have to ferment it. So there we go. You cap it off. Um, you want to keep it uh, fairly cool. Wine actually does a lot better than beer. Um, so you can get wine uh, well into the 70s. Um, and it'll be fine. Um, it's 90 degrees out here right now. So we want to put it in a, a cooler. It's got to go to your house. Dark place. You can go to my house. <laughs> I've got a, got a perfect room for it in my basement. The problem is I'm going to be drinking it from now until this is over here. Yes, I would love to sip. It's like, th this is the problem with this stuff. You start drinking it right away. Oh, yeah, it's, it's really good. <laughs> That's going to be good. Yep. So, All right. from, from your first batches to this batch, I know this batch was a lot more complicated than your other batch just because of my... Yeah. Uh, my batches get real difficult when I rack them, though. That's where they got really difficult because I was feel like dipping them out with a cup and pouring them in the All right. funnel okay. and stuff. So, so, to solve that problem, so we have a spigot. No one pays it. No one likes my red neck. We have a spigot. The problem with the spigot, um, it will work. All right, but that's nice of you to admit that. You're going to you're go you're going to have a lot of uh, trube. All of the basically the dead bacteria, mm -hmm. not. Dead yeast, dead yeast, excuse me. The dead yeast is going to fall down and you're going to have that thick cake down at the bottom. That big cloudy stuff. It doesn't taste very good. It's kind of bitter. I thought I was um, maybe high enough to be above that. So, well, when you pull off of it, it's going to be running right over the top of it. Mm. And it's going to be dragging it in like a riverbed, pulling uh, silt. Okay, so this is a dirty auto siphon. Um, it's about 14 bucks, 12, 14 bucks online. This is the bigger one. Um, they've got a, a small, I think it's like a three-eighths. Uh, this is a half inch. Um, so basically, this you pull a vacuum that's going to suck the liquid up into here. You're going to pump it down, it's going to push it through here. Boom, push it out, and it's going to push it through here. Um, then that would be that would be the preferred method Total of non racking. Total non-redneck. Correct, yes. Um, and then we're going to... We're gonna bottle once it's done. You want to sip? So you don't? I'll take this extra. No, I'll let you know in a couple of weeks. I guess if I'm taking it to my house. We'll no, I will uh, keep it here. I just keep not it sure where to yeah. So uh, we'll do. Uh, I've got bottles and a corker and everything, so we can bottle it, and then it can, you know, you can set it aside, lose a few bottles of it. Um, if the alcohol is high enough, it'll keep for years and years and years. Hmm. And it only gets better. So properly stored, of course. All right, there you go. Non red, not. Oh, I swear it hasn't fermented yet. Non redneck version of mead, man. It's worth it. Uh, I've got twenty-five dollars in the bucket total, but I didn't need any of that stuff. I did apparently. I think everything else he got you could have for cheaper than that. I just needed this one half inch drill bit to drill the hole. And then honey's honey's ridiculously expensive. Yep, honey is high. That's the obviously the. Yeah, thing. we just we basically used a whole gallon of honey, yeah. more or less. Yeah. But the yeast, the yeast is really cheap. It's it's probably maybe a dollar for a pack, something like that. One pack will do about five gallons. All right. So, uh, when is it Winfield or Winfield? I don't have it's Winfield. Win, it's Winfield. I'm sorry, I didn't have it right here in front of me. Winfield. Butch. It's got dibs on this batch. Uh, Dean Goldberry's got. <laughs> I still laugh when I say that. Dean Goldberry got dibs on this batch. 
Uh, anyone else who's got what's dibs lined up? Obviously, you got to get behind Burley. Yep. And Mariah, too. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. <laughs> Don't joke. You should see the look on her face. Thank you, man. We appreciate you.